Hi guys, today I am going to review Hindustan Aeronautical Limited, uh, which is one of India's premier defense company and uh, one of the sole uh, aeronautical and aerospace company in India. Uh, it's a mammoth company. So it will take more time than my usual videos to complete because it's so long, the products, uh, the portfolios and everything takes time. So I request my viewers to be patient. So HAL was established as Hindustan Aircraft Limited by a visionary called uh, Virchand Hirachand along with the uh, government of Mysore with the name of manufacturing aircraft in India. So he met a person called William D. Prowley on his journey towards uh, China and uh, William D. Prowley already set up a factory in China. So he discussed with uh, Will Chan Hiran Chan about the possibilities of uh, putting one factory in uh, in India. So uh, and it was uh, the the factory and uh, equipment was set up by Intercontinental Aircraft Corporation of New York and. Uh, uh, Maharaja of Mysore gave 25 lakh and 700 acres for free and the otherwise capital was for 4 crore rupees. Indian Institute and Indian Institute of Science gave technical support for the the project like uh, they given instruction how to assembly and everything and uh, the the first product to be assembled over there was Harlow PC5 assembly and uh, this shows uh, Harlow PC and uh, it is viewed for the public and there onwards the the factory and the Hindu Sign Aircraft Limited actually went under British government which later transferred to US Air Force because mainly the aircraft which were overhauled over there were US aircraft and it undergone uh, rapid expansion during World War II uh, due to Japanese threats uh, towards US and America and in 1947 when India got freedom Indian government took over in, uh, Hindustan aircraft and it also built aircraft under license mainly US aircraft Prentice, Vampire and Gant and in 1951 uh, India indigenously developed ST2 trainer aircraft uh, which was the first aircraft to be developed by HL uh, indigenously and they designed and uh, produced and it flew for the first time in 1951 and in 1964 Indian government took full control over HL and changed the name to Hindustan Aeronautics Limited with administration control under defense ministry mainly for manufacturing MiG-21 series and MiG-21 series actually uh, were the frontline fighters for become frontline fighters for India and still it remains uh, so uh, so uh, there onwards there were much milestones to say about Hindustan Air, uh, Aeronautical Limited uh, there onwards uh, we started manufacturing uh, MiG-27 and uh, Sukhoi, Sukhoi 31KI and India also developed uh, uh, indigenous uh, fighter Tejas. Before that, India developed uh, uh, indigenous fighter uh, uh, Marut. Marut was not that successful because uh, India did not have an indigenous uh, engine technology. So we also still we don't have indigenous uh, engine technology, but still uh, uh, HL uh, HL Tejas is still considered success uh, when you consider with the uh, the challenges India uh, faced while uh, developing this kind of fight. So uh, let me stop the uh, timeline uh, for that because uh, the timeline is so big for HL. So right now I am going on to the products. So the first product is uh, the fighter uh, aircraft. So fighter aircraft, uh, we have uh, fighter aircraft uh, which is li licensed and produced in, in India uh, mainly from Western and uh, mainly from Russian and uh, Western platforms. Russian platform is Sukhoi licensed products and uh, 
வெஸ்டர்ன் பிளாட்ஃபார்ம்ஸ் ஆர் மெயின்லி ஹாக் அட்வான்ஸ் ஜெட் ட்ரெயின் and other other fighters uh, i don't think they are in pr- uh, production right now so let me discuss about the hawk advanced jet trainer uh, this is a trainer aircraft uh, it is produced at bangalore Air- aircraft division under license from base system uk recently they upgraded to hawk i uh, the upgraded version actually launched smart anti air foil weapon Uh, which actually helps the aircraft to be uh, extends its utility from being a trainer towards a fighter aircraft so indian air, air force actually benefit from this test and apart from uh, its first order of 66 numbers from uh, army it has an additional order of 57 from air force and navy and next one is lca tejas uh, indian air force have a separate division in bangalore for producing lca tejas which, which actually passed uh, final operation clearance and uh, uh, defense ministry signs order worth uh, 6.58 uh, billion for 73 new mark 1a lca and uh, 10 two seater jet trainer uh, trainer jets and it uh, uh, it is indigenously pr- designed and produced even though it took so many years it's still considered success given the uh, challenges india faced in developing it and uh, it inc- incorporates a lot of indigenous technology and I expect m1k to be 60% indigenous uh, m1k is much advanced version than the uh, the initial versions and mk2 which is a uh, more bulkier and heavier fight uh, which is uh, supported by a twin engine uh, is expected to be more uh, agile and uh, more powerful than the lca tejas mk1 so it expect to be uh, uh, to be completed in uh, 2023 and there is sukhoi license products they do um, they started with mig 21 which is a uh, front line tactical interceptor fighter for india and it is expected to be replaced by tejas mm-hmm. and they have mig 27 which is also a tactical fighter and uh, the main fighter uh, the heavier uh, air superiority fighter sukhoi mk 30 mki uh, with a long range and uh, long endurance and multi role fighter it is also produced at nasik division uh, all these products are actually licensed from russia to produce in india and now i am going on to next product which is helicopters uh, first one is chetak uh, it is the first helicopter manufactured in uh, in india with the license from sud aviation which is uh, part of airbus france right now it has a utility of commuting cargo movement search and rescue mission uh it is so it has been sold more than 350 numbers it has a recent export order from uh, ministry of defense namibia and suriname and next one is cheetah helicopter it is a high performance helicopter uh it has been used in high altitude uh, mission rescue operations surveillance and so on it's mainly for uh, high uh, high altitude f- uh, flying and it has uh, it has uh, records for high altitude uh, flying it's uh, has been licensed from snis uh, eurocopter france uh, in 70s and uh, there is chital helicopter chital helicopter it is reengineered version of uh, cheetah uh, which is uh, reengineered for high altitude uh, function and our own operational requirements uh, uh, like uh, uh, the maintainability factors it consumes less fuel and other custom features which is suited for indian uh, climatic condi- climatic and uh, um, geographical conditions and actually delivered around 10 cheetal fighters for indian air force in lay region which is in uh, uh, which is in uh, jammu uh, jammu i mean uh, ladakh and uh, there is lancer in 1990s hl developed their first indigenously attack helicopter the basic structure was actually developed from cheetah helicopter 
now it is a three kind of helicopters these are all indigenously developed and indigenously designed and developed helicopters by hal and first one is dru it's a multi mission twin engine uh, twin engine helicopter and it is certified for uh, military and civilian purpose and it is in right now it is in production uh, from 2004 onwards it's on production and there are 228 helicopters uh, have been made 264 armed forces only and uh, 159 orders still there in order to supply for uh, army and indian air force so it's also used for civilian purposes uh, main customers include ongc gsi and it is exported for uh, nepal army mauritius uh, police and other customers too and there is rudra which is a weaponized uh, version of uh, dru helicopter uh, it has facilities like anti tank uh, attack uh, uh, facilities and fire support and so on and there comes light utility helicopter uh, it's a new generational helicopter uh, it's uh, it's also designed and developed uh, for the replacement uh, indigenously uh, developed Uh, for the replacement of cheetah and chetak helicopters uh, because it is a new gen helicopter it has features like glass co- cockpit multi function display single turbo shaft engine for high altitude thrust and it has a flying uh, speed of 220 km per hour with uh, 350 350 km of range with a 500 kg payload it's a multi role helicopter and uh, as uh, indian aircraft needed a dedicated combat he- helicopter they also designed and developed a light combat helicopter it has a steel and armor protection uh, uh, facilities and uh, it has ammunition like air to air missiles air to ground missiles and machine gun then we have uh, they also produce uh, other Uh, one uh, transport aircraft uh, d do 228 aircraft or drone air aircraft from their kanpur uh, division is a 19 seater multi purpose light transport aircraft uh, it has utility like uh, commuter transport uh, coast guard and maritime operations they are using and military roles as well so it's a highly uh, fuel efficient and uh, it has uh, f- uh, Uh, features of uh, excellent takeoffs and flying capabilities and uh, it also produce accessories for uh, um, aircraft uh, helicopters and uh, drone aircraft so it, the accessories are actually produ- uh, produced from kanpur division accessories include products like hydraulics engine fuel air conditioning flight control wheel and brake and uh, hl also produce avionics for uh, fighter helicopters and uh, drone aircraft so it uh, includes via- various range of avionics uh, equipments like airborne radars communication and navigation equipments on board uh, computers on all platforms of indian air force fleets and it is a engine division in koraput and uh, it manufactures engines based upon the license it gained from western and uh, russian platforms and uh, india doesn't have an indigenous uh, engine still it is trying to develop its own uh, indigenous engine and uh, they also overall engine as well and the overhaul division in bangalore it's the oldest division i just told you it started in 1940s with uh, servicing american air, uh, aircraft and uh, helicopters it's the oldest division that started in 1940s it has star- uh, serviced over 4000 aircraft and 6500 piston engines uh, with an experience of 70 years it is an aerospace division It is a, uh, so this aerospace division uh, manufactures hardware for aerospace programs for india and supplies uh, mainly isros programs uh, the products include uh, aluminum uh, alloy riveted structure and other hardware for rockets because they they manufacture and service uh, aerospace engine uh, 
aeronautical and uh, uh, aeronautical engines they also uh, manufactures industrial and uh, marine gas turbine uh, which is also similar to the aircraft engines so this include industrial a1 mk 1535 engine for not one uh, k engine and one more engine as well so if you see who uses it uh, there are uh, customers in oil and uh, natural gas division there are also other industrial customers uh, example is ongc uses 34a1 mk1535 engine in mumbai offshore uh, we don't uh, i try to gather as much uh, data from uh, hl like uh, how much revenue goes for e uh, how much revenue it gains from each product and so on but i couldn't find as much data uh, of uh, products and the revenue shared by each product so i have this uh, production that I, uh, the company made in 2019 2020 in 2019 20 company produced around 31 new aircraft and helicopter which includes sukhoi Tejas, Dronier and uh, other helicopters. It also produced uh, 170 new engines and accessories. Company had overall uh, 201 platforms uh, uh, which is uh, various type of aircraft and they had uh, overhauled 486 aero engines of rest, uh, Russian and Western or origin. If you see the ex exports of HAL mainly include uh, aero structures that is um, something like doors for uh, Boeing and uh, uh, Airbus and so on and they also include drone air aircraft, helicopters, engines, avionics and accessories. Sorry. Let's see the new initiative from HAL uh, for the new year to come. So uh, they started uh, manufacturing, testing and integration of bombs and missiles for various fighter jets and uh, helicopters, even indigenous and uh, western and uh, 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 Russian platforms. They ventured into uh, uh, overhauling of civil aircraft and uh, MRO of uh, civil aircraft and helicopters which is mainly uh, overhaul or repair functions mm -hmm. and they signed agreement for design development and certification production marketing and life cycle maintenance of 19 seater Saras MK second aircraft so Saras MK second aircraft which is a successful aircraft which flew uh, recently I don't remember the exact date in which they flew but uh, it actually uh, gives the company to develop new civilian type aircraft so so it, it had made a uh, agreement with the NAL in order to manufacture it and HL uh, signed an agreement with uh, IAI Israel and Dynamite Technologies, both Israel based uh, companies, uh, in a strategic collaboration for manufacturing and marketing of UAVs for Indian Army and uh, Indian Air Force and for export purposes as well. If you look at the future outlook, the company actually benefits from a uh, recent lot of in made in India products like LUH, uh, light utility helipad. Uh, helicopter light combat aircraft and its variants uh, light combat helicopter HTT 40 and so on and uh, if you look at future programs like Tejas MK second AMC which is also fighter aircraft program which is but it is a slightly different program from Tejas MK second because it's a entirely different platform and twin duck based fighter and other programs which will ensure that uh, the technological lead of the HAL will continue in the years to come and the collaboration with HAL IAI DTL for UA segment and uh, leasing agreement with airline operators for drone air aircraft for civilian operations are expected to add more revenues and business streams for companies for the years to come 
Let me tell you some interesting facts. Uh, HL Marut, uh, which is HF24 uh, Marut, uh, did not uh, uh, meet design performance expectations mainly due to non-availability of engine. And uh, in order to find a dedicated fighter, we focused on HL stages, which took more than 20 years to uh, complete initial operation. Uh, more than 25 years, I think. Uh, to complete initial operation clearance and uh, 2019 only they got uh, final operation clearance but given the hurdles it had gone through and uh, given the technological challenges um, uh, scientists face I still consider it as a major success for India and it will be a uh, good initiative in making India, uh, India initiative in the years to come and HL helicopter division has successfully manufactured 600 in single engine helicopter which is an achievement and the Cheetal helicopter uh, set a world record of uh, world's highest landing in Caesar Kangri in Himalayas in 2006 and they made final operation clearance for Jagad Darin III which is a western platform license for India and it is an upgraded version they go, it got a final operation clearance and uh, there is also initial operational clearance for light utility helicopter which is both are positive for HL. Let's see the shareholding pattern. Uh, the Indian government or president of India was holding the major shareholding as a promoter. So, but in 2020 uh, September they actually divested uh, the shareholding from 89 to 75 uh, which is a major dip in their shareholding uh, so still uh, government of india continues to be a major shareholder for the hl and i think it should be it would be continued in the years to come because hl is a, uh, a strategic uh, business and if you see foreign institutional investors actually increased their stake from 0.29 in 2018 to 0.91 just positive and uh, domestic institutional investors they just hold uh, just holding around 8% in 2018 and they increased to 20.31 in uh, 2021 which means that they uh, the the business with uh, the business profile of HL is improving and uh, they are in a right target targetry and public shareholding also going up but not uh, uh, considerably like mutual funds have been e increasing in that uh, range uh, I feel that one of the main reason for it HL is a public uh, I mean government of India supported company so uh, uh, the the reason uh, to uh, I mean the the amount of uh, uh, price hike in the share price it's not that uh, uh, bullish like a private company so it might be one of the reason why public is not that interested in uh, increasing share only let's do financial evaluation uh, it has a market capitalization of 3,216 uh, crores which is a large cap uh, share uh, company and it has a current price of 960 when it has a book value of 418 per share. So if you see the current price is actually double than its book value and uh, it went as high as 1424 per share in recent times so it uh, gone as 489 during uh, uh, financial year 2020 i mean uh, february uh, 2020 when uh, all uh, due to covid uh, everything market crash it went as low as 489 and it is a stock PE of 11.3 which is very low than 20.4 what an, a, the defense industry actually um, uh, gets. So from uh, stock PE the stock is undervalued 
and uh, look at the dividend yield they are one of the uh, companies which give you more dividends so any long term investors it's a, it's a positive for them they will get uh, dividends for so many years and it's a, it's a positive business any time you don't under, uh, you don't consider there is a threat for this kind of defense industries roc is very good 23.9 percentage roe is also very high and uh, face value of 10 yeah, if you see these numbers are very recent or uh, uh, trailing 12 month uh, month figures and uh, recent year they have a sales of 22,265 crews with an operating margin of 22.9 so operating margin is high and uh, profit after tax is 2,853 which is also high recent scale sales quarter they made a figure of 500 uh, 5425 crores with a pat of uh, 853 crores and in three years they made a six percentage increase in their sales uh, which is not that high but it's okay and profit also grown very low at three percentage which is also not high and uh, other factors are let's look at the financial return patterns and uh, over the years the the revenue and the profit has been steady or uh, flat and uh, there has been slight increase in uh, revenue over the years so if you look uh, from 1600 uh, 16758 crores to 22265 crores and profit is also was flat in 2022 2873 in uh, uh, 2021 12 month trailing uh, months it has uh, 2853 sales growth uh, previously i uh, i told uh, it has only six percentage growth with it uh, in ttm it it actually dipped down uh, to four percentage growth and profit growth is not high only three percentage in ttm it's only it goes minus one percentage which is not that good for the company and EBITDA figures are mostly flat getting around 28 uh, right now it is around 24 only in 2015 it dipped to 16.39 let's look at the the profit and loss uh, second uh, sales figures uh, 16000 uh, it has been flat expenses also were flat there was no much change and uh, much increase which is positive for the company if you look at the operating operational uh, margin in uh, 2016 they have only 15 slowly it started increasing to 23 percentage which is very positive for the company other incomes are actually decreasing which is which is actually good actually if you think mm. there has been a slow increase in depreciation and uh, look at the dividend that, uh, that is what i am very much interested it's 54 percentage and 39 percentage actually is a highly dividend paying company so any investor interested in dividends they can they can invest on to it uh, they they have an ro uh, they have roce roa roe figures uh, if you look uh, if you look at a company like a highly capital intensive company like uh, hal the ROC you have to think about ROC in much larger than the ROE and ROA figures so uh, in 2015 only they had a minor dip in ROC at 6.18 from there it actually gone up uh, tremendously to 18.83 which is very good for the company 18.83 ROC is very good uh, to any company and uh, roe normally roc and roe are uh, 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 if it is a capital intensive company 
mostly look at ROC rather than ROE. And ROE it's also flat or uh, steady, which means that uh, company is uh, steady in uh, utilizing its asset to increase its uh, revenues. Let's look at the risk factors of HAL. Uh, the cash flow and liquidity profile of HAL actually improved significantly in the financial year 2021 because the collections from its uh, customers, which is mainly from Ministry of Defense and uh, Forces, actually gone up uh, to 35,000 crores. So it had a borrowing of 5,775 crores in March 31st, 2020. From there, it went to uh, went to a surplus cash balance of uh, seven thousand three hundred fifty uh, uh, seven thousand three hundred fifteen crores uh, as of March thirty first two thousand twenty one, which is highly positive for the company, and the credit rating also reflected this factor. So the long term fund based credit actually got a credit rating upgrade to uh, ICRA uh, AA positive for their long-term fund-based credit of 1000 crores. Uh, they had two short-term uh, short uh, fund-based credit. Uh, one is non-fund-based and one is commercial paper uh, of 2500 crores each. Both have ICRA A1 plus reaffirmed uh, rating. And if you look at the uh, uh, the the positive uh, fact for the company uh, that's acting for the company the company operates in a highly a high capital intensive and long gestation period for developing manufacturing cap uh, capabilities in this sector which is very positive for the company because uh, uh, the co the larger competition for the company is very less or even uh, you can say they have a monopoly but uh, in the coming years that won't be there uh, but still it will continue to be a, a major force in that industry let's see the business risk one of the main risk is uh, ministry of defense is the main uh, major customer and it contributes around 90 percentage of the revenue so if there is any delay in uh, collection from forces it will it will have to depend on external funding for its day-to-day -day operations even like uh, in 2019 HIL took a loan of 1000 crores to pay salaries for the employees but in 2021 it was uh, the company was uh, had a positive events like uh, it had more collections so it went positive for the company and there are uh, problems like cost overruns and production delay penalties like uh, for the for the sector the margins uh, for manufacturing aircraft and uh, helicopters are predefined and uh, if there is uh, cost overruns mainly happening uh, due to delays and uh, uh, there would be as also associated penalties uh, because of these uh, will affect the margins of the company. So these are the two main business risk companies facing and uh, the business uh, risk from the competitors is, is actually you can say you can't say nil but it is not considerably high or uh, companies still have a moat in the industry. Debt to equity ratio, it is a good debt to equity ratio in 2013. From there, it uh, gone up to 0.44, but still, I think from if you consider tra trailing 12 month margin, it would have been come down. And interest coverage ratio also, it was ha had a tough time in 2019 and 2020 as well. From uh, previously, they had a good interest coverage ratio. Uh, but in, I think that in uh, recent uh, uh, trailing 12 month margin, the interest coverage ratio would have been high. I couldn't show it because uh, that was not available right now. And let's go to the valuation. Uh, one thing surprised me is uh, over the years uh, from 2013 the book value of the company has actually come down or uh, even uh, gone 
more than uh, half so it has a book value of 1074 uh, rupees per share it came uh, down to 305 actually which is the lowest one and uh, in trailing 12 month margin it actually improved uh, book value one thing uh, uh, i think the reason for it uh, many of its technologies are going obsolete like mic 21 platforms is going to be obsolete and it has to be replaced by tejas so you have to write down uh, write it off so this write off might have been the reason i, I don't know the exact reason but i'm predicting that one actually if you look at the price to book value uh, it has a price to book value of 3.1 in 2018 0 0.6 in 2019 1.3 in uh, financial year 2020 and right now stands around 2.3 which is high little bit high but still okay i, I would say okay given the mammoth company like hl is and uh, price uh, the previous thing only i shown that uh, price to earning ratio is 11.3 when industry at uh, 20.4 and price to book value is little high at uh, 2.3 if you make peer to uh, peer comparison you can actually compare you, uh, there, there is no such uh, enterprise to compare like uh, but still you can compare with Bharat Dynamics and BEM which are in defense and uh, if you see the price to earning ratio uh, it still have lower price to earning ratio comparing with uh, Bharat Dynamics and BEM and uh, if you see the market capitalization is also high for Hindustan Aeronauticals so it's a big mammoth company when you consider that and uh, look at the ROCE ROCE Bharat Dynamics is better than uh, in the sun aeronauticals so i think that that's why they actually uh, gets more uh, price to earning ratio than uh, the sun aeronauticals so you can actually compare with the uh, hindustan aeronautics and barrett dynamics rather than bml i feel so so in uh, price chart uh, the company actually uh, when it is listed it was trading around 1200 from there it came down uh, in 2020 it went as low as uh, 480 something see the the lowest figure from there it actually jumped up in 2020 20 august went as high as 1400 actually 1000 not 1293 and uh, still it came down but it's a stable business so I expect the current market price at 984 still it's a viable uh, level so let me give you my insights as an insight uh, current market price is at 984 it is a low P at 11.3 uh, when you compare with the industry P of 20 and a uh, little bit overvalued uh, price to book value at 2.3 is but still I am I think that uh, uh, stock is at reasonable level it's not an expense issue yeah? uh, that's a mistake from me and uh, it's uh, when you s uh, say about positive about the company it's a mammoth company uh, there is entry barrier for new companies to set up uh, uh, manufacturing f uh, like this and uh, there is less competition due to high investment and risk associated with it so the competition is very very less uh, the competition might be like uh, tata defense or uh, uh, mahindra aviation these are nascent companies they uh, still have capabilities but uh, it will take uh, times to achieve a skill and uh, in i think that investex can uh, still buy the share they can keep it for long term investment uh for this price as well and you will also expect a lot of dividends from the company so i actually recommend for long-term investors i don't recommend for swing traders so uh, even i don't think the the price would uh, uh, i don't think the price would go to 800 levels so swing trade i don't recommend it 
and the main risk associated is uh, may, uh, single they have a single major customer which is ministry of defense and they have less export revenues and other associated revenues so these are the risks and there is also uh, risk from obsolescence of technologies like i said mi 21 uh, is phased out so that technology is going uh, obsolescence so there would be write offs and depreciation of the, that kind of assets so and defense industry is fast changing if a company is not able to cope up with the fast changing pace it it won't be positive for the company the disclaimer uh, for last and final the disclaimer i'm not an appropriately licensed portfolio manager the viewers are requested uh, to have your own decisions and uh, make your own investments and uh, last one give me uh, positive or negative feedbacks or whatever you f- feels like about my video uh, i feel great for the your views